Like the assassinations of John F. Kennedy and his brother Robert, the murder of Martin Luther King, Jr. is a case that refuses to be closed. Nine years later, a special committee of Congress is investigating the crime. The Attorney General of the United States has publicly said he wants to talk to the man who sits in prison as the assassin. It was on April 4th, 1968, that Dr. King was shot in Memphis, Tennessee. In June, James Earl Ray was arrested in England for the crime. What we subsequently heard about Ray was that he was an escaped convict who had been on a strange year-long odyssey winding up in Memphis. What we heard from Ray was that his travels had been directed and financed by an underworld character he knew only as Raoul. It seemed a simple case when James Earl Ray pleaded guilty, but just three days later he recanted, claiming that he'd been railroaded into the plea by his own attorney, Percy Foreman. For eight years, the courts have refused to grant him a new trial. For eight years, the questions about a possible conspiracy have persisted, and all this time, Ray has declined to tell his side of the story on television. Until I went to interview Ray last week at Brushy Mountain Penitentiary in Tennessee, where he is serving a 99-year sentence as the assassin of Martin Luther King, Jr. Did you fire the shot that killed Dr. Martin Luther King? No, and I think now, uh, based on investigations uh, of those who have uh, represented me, that we could prove it through some type of uh, judicial proceedings. 6.01 p.m. Immediately after Dr. King was shot, people with him pointed toward a rooming house across the street. Ray had rented a room there that day. The state claims he fired the fatal shot from there. Ray says he has an alibi. Now, this, of course, is critical. Yes. Has your recollection as to where you were between, let us say, 5.50 p.m., and just after 6 o'clock, April 4th, 1968. You remember going to the service station and yes. having the tire fixed? I, did, I didn't have it fixed. They said that something was busy. It was a business hour or something. They didn't have time for it. And uh, I never did get the tire fixed. My point is that you were not in the rooming house, or were you, between, let's say, after 5.30 p.m.? No, I'm positive I wasn't in there after 5.30 well, let me take you back to that day in the courtroom when you had your day in court. Short day it was. The judge asked you whether you were doing it voluntarily, the guilty plea, and you said yes, sir. I, I can't understand if, if you knew that you didn't pull the trigger on the gun that killed Dr. King, why you would go that far and say those things. Well, well this was all decided on March 9th, the day before the, the plea was entered. At that time, I determined that there was no way that I could force Percy Foreman to go on the trial with any prospects of success. But I assumed that if I did enter a plea of guilty and, and I could have uh, had an, an investigation after the plea uh, with new, newly discovered evidence, there's a possibility that, that the case could have been reversed and won the trial. That same day when you entered your guilty plea, there was a whole series of questions involving the voluntary nature of your plea. That you knew what you were doing, that you weren't being forced, that you knew you were giving up your right to appeal. All of those things were laid out to you. And you answered to all of those, yes, you knew what you were doing. If I had it all to do over again, I, I really don't see how I could have done anything different. If somebody else did it, why sit here silent? Why not tell everything you know and do everything you can to find the other people? Well, I, I don't know. I think a lot of people have a sort of a Pollyanna view of the legal system. All you got to do is go to the prosecutor and say, oh, here, here's what it is that turned me loose. No, that's it. But that's not the way it is. If, uh, if, you, if you testify to the prosecutor, he'll just use what you tell him to weave it in his story. It doesn't necessarily mean he's going to turn you out or anything like that. 